next on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we talk to an expert about animal welfare. Plus, we learn more about stock dogs and the role they play on many cattle operations around the country. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, the Fish and Wildlife Service has decided not to list the greater sage grouse under the Endangered Species Act. But that may not be the end of this issue. The sage grouse has been listed as warranted but precluded. That means the agency wanted to list the sage grouse on the endangered species list, but they don't have the resources available to actively protect the bird. NCBA and the Public Lands Council do not feel a listing of the bird is needed. Cattle ranching and grazing practices that are instituted for grazing actually help the sage grouse habitat. And ranching over the last century has been done alongside sage grouse and in their habitat. And in fact, over the recent decades, grazing has been reduced dramatically across the West and the bird population has also decreased. So in the past, it's shown to be a complementary with ranching and the practices that ranchers use for grazing. The next steps for the government are to continue to monitor the sage grouse and the population and conservation practices on the ground and continue to institute conservation practices in collaboration with ranchers and local land managers so that they basically continue the monitoring of the population to make sure it doesn't drastically decrease or have negative impacts by outside activities. The Department of Interior, specifically the Fish and Wildlife Service, announced recently a decision of, about the greater sage grouse to not list it under the Endangered Species Act, but give it a decision of warranted but precluded. Now, what this means is they found that it was warranted for listing uh, under the Endangered Species Act. However, it was precluded due to the lack of resources available to the agency to effectively protect the bird under the ESA. The Public Lands Council and NCBA recommend contacting your members of Congress to express your concern about the status of issues like these. Public lands are important to Western ranchers, especially in states like Montana. And speaking of big sky country, that's where NCBA President-elect Bill Donald hails from. Bill, thanks for coming back to the Good show. Good to be here, Kevin. You bet. Tell us a little bit about public lands. That's a foreign concept to a lot of people across the country, but one that's critically important to folks like yourself. Well, yeah, in Montana, we have uh, about 94 million acres, and about 30% of that is public land, about 27 million acres. Uh, most of that is uh, Forest Service. There's about uh, 60 and a half million acres of Forest Service, about 8 million acres of BLM, and then 2 and a half million of national parks and others. And uh, that, with that, there are permittees that graze on most of those lands. And uh, there's about 4,000 BLM permittees in Montana and about 1,000 mm -hmm. Forest Service. So it's a big issue for ranchers. Absolutely. And speaking of big issues, we've been talking about the sage grouse. And I know that's something that uh, uh, NCBA, one of the issues that NCBA works hard on every day for, for cattlemen across the country. Give us your perspective. Well, uh, recently, the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, made a ruling on the sage grouse, and they uh, ruled that the sage grouse was in need of protection, but they were precluded from putting on under the Endangered Species Act, the ESA at this time, because there are other species that are more threatened at risk of extinction. So the result of that ruling is that the sage grouse went on a list that is a candidate for protection. Uh, what that basically means is the uh, Wildlife services will watch that every year, monitor that every year, and then they will make the determination if they should be put on the list. Currently, there's about 264 other species on this candidate's list. Mm. They rank those as a 1 to 12, 1 being the highest priority and 12 being the lowest. The sage grouse got a listing of 8. Uh, three days after the uh, uh, Wildlife Services made their ruling, mm -hmm. uh, Western Watersheds uh, group from Idaho, which is an environmental group, uh, sued, sued them to make them uh, put the sage grouse on the, under the uh, Endangered Species Act really? listing. So what they're asking is that they 
immediately take the sage grouse off of the candidates list and put them on the listing of, of uh, endangered species. So it's still an issue that we're monitoring and we're going to have to work on. Well, and you bring up a, an excellent point because, you know, a lot of these issues a lot of us don't know are, are occurring, but that's exactly why we have organizations like NCBA, and I know you're a huge supporter uh, of NCBA, of being a member, I should say, of NCBA. Tell folks why you think it's important for cattle people to, to, to be members of this organization. Well, I'm a member because I can't be in Washington, D.C. monitoring all these issues. NCBA has an excellent staff that's in Washington, D.C. every day monitoring what's going on in Congress as well as the regulatory agencies. Agencies mm -hmm. that have impacts over all our businesses and our outfits. So uh, with that staff can do things and monitor things that, that members can't be there every day and do. So we pay them our dues, they monitor that, and then when they need help with us contacting our representatives and congressmen or agencies, we can do that. So it's a real team effort. Now earlier this year there were some special incentives for becoming members. Are those still going on? Yeah, they are until uh, May 31st. Uh, Beringer Ingelheim has generously donated a 500 milliliter bottle of Cydectin mm. to every new member, plus they will give a bottle to an existing member that recruits a new member. So it's a great opportunity and the timing couldn't be better to become a new member of NCBA. Well, we appreciate all the work you're doing on behalf of all cattlemen across the Well, thank the country. you, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. You bet. Join cattlemen like Bill as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's easy to do. Just call us at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. Education for college students isn't just found in the classroom. Reporter Matt Fleck has more from this year's International Livestock Congress. One of the things that's very important about this meeting, and of course I think you already know this, is the young people that we bring in in our student program to interface with our, our, our long-term experts in the industry uh, so we can uh, begin that communication that must occur. It is definitely very refreshing to see some nice, young, bright people coming into the farming business with a good education and some enthusiasm and some ideas of how they will take things forward. It's lovely to see that and I come from a country with an extremely deep tradition of livestock development but which but in which the commercial environment has been extremely negative for the last 20 years since BSE and FMD and various other problems. So for me it's nice to come and see a bit of youth and passion and intelligence being applied into something which is emotionally quite um, close to my heart. College students focused on livestock and the meat industry have a wealth of career opportunities open to them. Beyond their work at school, another valuable experience is attending industry gatherings, such as the National Western Stock Show and the International Livestock Congress. This is the first time where I've really been able to work and interact one-on-one -on -one with industry leaders and other producers and my peers from other countries, not just the U.S., and talk to them about the challenges and obstacles that we're all facing across the globe and how we can work together um, to really I've come up with a solution together um, to make the agriculture industry that much stronger. It's surpassed my expectations. Like, I wasn't really sure what I was going to get out of this, but, you know, coming here and just networking and learning so much about the beef industry and the issues, and even the industry leaders has been phenomenal. And I've sort of met a lot of contacts and actually mentors that can help me down the road and are willing to, you know, provide me with help to pursue my career. Students come from around the world to study meat science in the United States. Being able to participate in the International Livestock Congress can be a highlight of that experience. It's been a great opportunity to hear what it's like to be in the, live, in the livestock sector, what it's like to be out there and the challenges that they face and what we have to do in order to overcome those challenges. So I consider this a golden opportunity and um, I've learned a lot and I'm sure I'm going to keep on learning a lot from it and I value so much the connections that I've had from this uh, Congress. Those who already have careers in the beef industry enjoy sharing their knowledge with young people and seeing the potential in today's students. What we see in our young people coming up is, is uh, intelligence, passion, uh, enthusiasm, uh, they're our future and, uh, and our job in universities is to make sure they're prepared to get out in, in the world and uh, do what they have to do to carry us to the next level because 
you know, guys like me will be gone in a few years. With expanding international demand for meat, and issues such as food safety and the shortage of livestock veterinarians, there are real opportunities for students focused on the beef industry. I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the ILC and the International Stockman's Educational Foundation, visit us at cattlemen to cattlemen.org. Ahead on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll take a look at how a pre-breeding vaccination program can benefit your operation. Stay with us. We'll be... Two 100% pure USDA inspected panties are only the beginning of what make the Big Mac famous. And that's what we're made of. Sure, anyone can make a twine bale, but can you make them right bale after bale till the whole field is done? With a John Deere 458 standard, you can. The new automatic twine tie system takes the headache out of wrapping a twine bale. It packs a whole lot of baler into one affordable package. Ready to show those twine bales who's boss? Talk to your John Deere dealer today. You take pride in the beef you raise. Countless hours invested to assure a safe and wholesome calf crop. Why trust that calf crop to just anyone? Experience the new Dinklage difference with a long history and reputation for outstanding performance and cattle care. We use a combination of cutting edge technologies and data driven decision making to establish our place as leaders in the cattle feeding industry. Allow Dinklage to be a part of your team in the quest to maximize your profits. With five locations to serve you in Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado. For more information on the new Dinklage difference, stop by one of our yards or visit us on the web at DinklageFeedYards.com. NCBA and Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica are teaming up to bring you more membership value. Join before May 30th and receive a free 500 milliliter bottle of Cytexin Poron. Join both NCBA and your state association and receive a second bottle of Cytexin absolutely free. For details, call 1-866-USA-B or visit beefusa.org. Welcome back. According to Cattle Facts, an open cow costs almost $400 per year. Her ability to conceive and calve on schedule is affected by multiple factors, including the presence of diseases such as IBR, BVD, leptospirosis, including leptoharjo bovis. For this reason, producers should consider a comprehensive reproduction vaccination program that helps provide extended protection against these harmful diseases. To understand these benefits, Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter heads to the sand hills of western Nebraska. Really, ranchers use uh, reproductive vaccines to control or to reduce risk for losses that result in reproductive losses. And it's so important to have uh, cows, heifers calving early in the calving season. Uh, we need to really grow the number of pounds at, at weaning. We are very much in a preventive mode uh, as we discuss reproductive efficiency. So we want to head off uh, any losses that might, that might ensue. One of the main places I think it comes into play is preparing that heifer to go into the cow herd, to become a mother cow, to stay in the herd, to breed back year after year, keep her immunity up so she has a healthy baby, breeds back each year. Mick Knott, managing partner for Loot Ranches in the Sand Hills of Western Nebraska, has seen firsthand the benefits of a good reproductive vaccination program. We're set up here with about 1,500 head of cows and two, two full-time employees taking care of those uh, on a range situation. We don't want to have to take time to doctor calves or cows or anything. Mick has been using Pfizer Animal Health products for 15 years. He has a high level of trust thanks to his success using Bovashield Gold vaccines to help keep his operation on track. I've used Bovashield Gold since its inception. 
Uh, we like the fact that it's a modified live virus and it fits into several different facets of our operation. I think the Bovishield Gold product is, is a great product to implement into preventive health strategies on ranch operations. Uh, I think it, it targets expectations and, and goals of, of ranchers for reproductive uh, preventive health. Reproductive diseases can cause substantial productivity and profitability losses, particularly through effects on reproductive performance and calf losses. Bovishield Gold vaccines help producers protect their cattle and profits from several costly diseases. Using a vaccine that, that contains uh, many antigens or agents, if you will, uh, really allows for flexibility uh, as well as convenience in a, in a preventive health program. And so by being able to use it at the right time, uh, it certainly uh, it, it fits very well into when ranchers handle their cattle uh, and, and they're able to really incorporate it well into a preventive strategy. There's a spectrum of d different diseases out there that we need to be protected against. You, you know, we can't just hone in on one thing, that'll get us in trouble. Uh, you have your, you know, BVDs, the big one in the, in the news that everybody hears about, the persistently infected calf. Uh, but you don't want to forget about the red nose. That's one of the most important parts of, about Bovishield Gold, is that ability to cover a wide gamut of diseases with a single dose. Vaccines are expensive, we know that, but trips through the chute are even ever bit as expensive as the vaccine. So the more that we can cover in a system that allows different vaccines to work together, the better it is. Bovishield Gold vaccines not only provide a high level of disease protection, they also take that protection to the next level with a duration of immunity that helps protect against the diseases that can impact reproduction. That is one thing we really like about the Bovishield Gold. We can give it at preg time and have a year's uh, protection in that animal. And that saves us a trip through the chute uh, to get as many of those jobs done as we can there. And that will be her basic vaccination program for as long as she stays in the cow herd. Not says vaccinating fewer times pays off in lower labor costs and reduces stress on the animals. In addition, he also relies on Bovishield Gold to help keep respiratory problems in his calves to a minimum. When I first became involved with the operation, we had problems with summer pneumonia. And our veterinarian, uh, local sales reps got together and thought that we could probably get away from some of that by using the Bovishield Gold in the spring at branding time on the calves. That has been very successful. We've virtually eliminated any summer pneumonia and have very few health problems through the summertime. So that started our success with the Bovishield Gold. We'll head back to Western Nebraska for more when we return. Draxon, clearly cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. And with Draxon, we just found out that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Quality matters to me because I put the finishing touches on the cattle I feed. I search for the highest quality forages and provide a comfortable environment that allow the animals to thrive and grow. 
I'm the last person that has an impact on the quality and consistency of the product that goes to the consumer. And that matters to me and the crew that I manage. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. A strong reproductive vaccination program is key to successful cow-calf operation. Let's return to reporter Brian Baxter for more from the Sand Hills of Western Nebraska. Vaccination timing can help maximize results. When we consider vaccine use and where they fit in preventive health strategies, uh, timing is, is very important because we want to induce or hopefully cause enough immunity uh, so that when exposure occurs, uh, disease will not ensue. Also, in regard to reproductive vaccines, uh, peak immunity uh, at peak exposure times is part of the plan. So as we set up protocols, uh, that's part of the planning. Talking with your local veterinarian is a good place to start when deciding which vaccination program is right for you. I really like to see a rancher work very closely with his or her veterinarian uh, to think through preventive health strategies, to think about the risks uh, that are occurring in that operation, and to make adjustments, uh, changes that might sometimes be related to management, and it might relate to incorporating a, a vaccine. I think the veterinarian is aware of what's going on in that area in his practice area and uh, there may be some things there that the producers are not aware of that they need to be protecting the cow herd against. After you've selected a vaccination program, Dr. Grota Lucian says there are a few key things to keep in mind when handling and administering vaccines. First, read the package insert and follow the directions. Always store the vaccine in a temperature controlled environment. Never mix more vaccine than you'll use in one hour and always use clean needles and syringes. Though margins are tight, producers shouldn't be tempted to cut corners on sound preventive health programs. In a tough economy, it's always easy to pick out uh, certain things as targets of cutting. However, health risks are ongoing and they range from chronic losses to risk of catastrophic losses. And so it becomes, a, I think, a relatively low cost budget item to really control risk and, and probably should rate very, very low on the list of, of things that might be uh, eliminated because it, it does address risk so well. It's a better deal to vaccinate. It's back to the ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, you might say. Uh, that vaccine that works well and does provide that protection, even though you may not need it, at some point it could be very needed. And having the, having the cow herd set up in a routine, regular vaccination program is much easier than playing catch up later on in the process when you have problems. For Mick Knott and his veterinarian, Dr. Tim Knott, there's no doubt that helping prevent disease with Bovashield Gold vaccines helps enhance productivity. They also appreciate having access to the Pfizer Animal Health team. We've been using Pfizer products for the past 15 years, and uh, the main reason that we use them is uh, their sales and technical staff. Our veterinary is, likes the products. They fit well into our operation and what we're trying to accomplish in herd health. They're a quality company. Uh, they have good tech services. If you, you know, if you have questions or feel like you have a problem in a herd, they're very supportive. Ultimately, a strong vaccination program aids in the prevention of costly diseases, which translates into increased reproductive success and profit opportunities for the producer. Reproductive success in the cow-calf operation is probably number one. The one thing that influences profitability more than anything else we do. Uh, an open cow costs a lot of money. And anything we can do for that cow 
to give her the opportunity to rebreed and produce a calf the following year is money in our pocket. Reporting from Western Nebraska, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about the Bovishield Gold line of products from Pfizer Animal Health or steps you can take to start a preventative reproductive health program in your operation, log on to our website at cattlemen to cattlemen .org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Discover a great roundup for beef producers. Now, Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Incorporated has rounded up the top brands of animal health products. You bet your boots you won't find more ways to protect your cattle. So trust the leader to protect your cattle. Trust Beringer Ingelheim. Talk to your Beringer Ingelheim animal health representative and discover how we can help your operation. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Bend Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Bend Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBendTrailers.com. Big Bend Trailers, built cattlemen tough. At each year's cattle industry convention and NCBA trade show, one of the big drawing cards is the Cattle Learning Center demonstration area where experts provide hands-on learning in areas such as horsemanship, low-stress cattle handling, and much more. No doubt one of the most popular demonstrations each year is with stock dogs, and this year was no exception. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Dave Russell brings us the story. On most ranches, if there's any dogs around, come time to do any cattle work, the dogs are put away. And uh, so many people seem to think that you almost have to be a professional dog trainer to train and handle a dog. And this is really not true. When it comes to working with cow dogs and using them to handle cattle with ease, Charlie Trier knows his stuff. Watch him. Bring him on. The reason it's better if you get these cattle dogs, bro. It's easy to handle them, you know. You can go out any day of the year, any time of the day, and go gather your cattle and pen them, and it's not a big deal, you know. And that's where most people have the most trouble is, is getting their cattle gathered and penned. And, and with these dogs, if they're used right, it's just a simple thing. Charlie speaks from experience. He spent 40 years using dogs to help handle the herd on the Cottonwood Ranch in the Flint Hills of Kansas. These days, Charlie lives in North Texas, where he's a top-notch trainer of stock dogs. And the breed he favors is called the Hanging Tree Cow Dogs. Yeah, this is, this is Gunny. Uh, he's one of my stud dogs. And, uh, and then this is Ruby. She's a nice little female. These are the Hanging Tree Cow Dogs. And, uh, and what that is, it's a, it's a composite breed that a man named Gary Erickson did, developed a uh, it's been over 30 years ago when Gary started with this. So I guess the importance is, uh, to me, is it's a better way of handling stock. They're a retrieving type dog that goes out and gathers cattle and brings them back to you. They're, you know, they're, they're uh, aggressive, tough enough dogs that can handle all types of cattle, but at the same time, you know, they're good disposition dogs. They're, they're intelligent, easy to train. Charlie believes too many people don't realize what a well-trained dog can do for their cattle operation. Around the country, cattle dogs and stock dogs so much of the time have a really bad reputation because nobody's ever been exposed to good ones that, that have some discipline in mind and, and work correct. You know, all they've ever been exposed to and seen are, are, are dogs that have no control and, and just causing trouble. So uh, 
That's been my main objective is to, to uh, expose people to these these uh, dogs that and what you can do with them. You know, uh, you can do so much with uh, with good dogs that are that handle and are under control. I've got you know ranchers and cowboys all over the the country using dogs and uh, doing a very good job getting a, a lot of work done. These dogs are very intelligent and. Uh, there's, there's really no limit to what you can teach them if you have a desire to do so. Charlie says he usually starts training a dog at about a year old and a good hard month of work, plus a lot of patience. You can get a dog ready to start working cattle and gaining experience. You can teach a dog to do a lot in a, say a small pasture, uh, have him really working great. Boy, you think you got the greatest dog ever lived, and then you take him to another place, he's lost, you know. It's just a different situation, he doesn't know what to do. So you need to expose these dogs to different situations, and and the more you do, the better they're gonna get. But uh, it takes, you know, in three months time, you can have a really good dog. Yeah. Having worked on a ranch himself, Charlie believes the real value of a good, hard-working cow dog is that he can put money in a cattleman's pocket. Absolutely. You know, that was kind of the, the main point I tried to stress in this uh, demonstration, you know, that if, depending on how many cattle you're handling, but if it, it comes shipping day and, and if you can go out and gather them and walk them to the pens in a quiet, low stress manner and, and get them there the quickest way possible without having trouble and get them in there and get them across the scales, that's a big money deal. You know, the more cattle you got there, the the less shrink you got on them, it can amount to a lot of money. But wherever I go, whether I'm horseback or foot, you know, these dogs are going to bring the cattle to me unless I tell them to do something else. So how do you get a cow dog that can help make you money? Charlie says it starts with a little bit of discipline from you. The main thing is that you need to have the, uh, the commitment to, to go out and work with your dog and spend the time with it. Uh, and you got to have some patience and, and uh, desire and, uh, to, to do it. Uh, that's part of the, and you got to have a, a dog that, that has a desire to work for you and uh, respond to you. You know, you can't just, you can't make a cow dog out of a bird dog or something like that. You know, you got to have a, a good, good bred dog. Good cow dogs like Gunny and Ruby. I can say I'm going to stay back away from the cattle and let these dogs just work on the back side of the herd here. I'm Dave Russell reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You can get more information on Charlie Trainer and his stock dogs by visiting cattlemen to cattlemen.org. We'll be right back. Profit, confidence, value. That's what you get with Trimerit, a USDA process verified program brought to your operation by Global Animal Management Incorporated. Trimerit's data management system certifies traditional health processes as well as verifies age and source of individual and groups of animals. To learn more about how Trimerit can play a positive role in your operation, visit mygamonline.com. I'd like a moment with you dairy men, and if you're watching this, I'll assume you're done milking, to talk about the Dairy Beef Quality Assurance Program. DBQA has been designed to reduce lameness, bruises, and impolite behavior in the dairy cows and calves and steers that you're going to market for beef. The point is to guarantee as best we can to your buyers and to the consumer that we know what we're doing, that we're treating our animals right, and that the meat they buy is safe and wholesome. Because every milk cow and dairy calf you sell is gonna wind up on a plate someday, and we wanna make sure that our consumers have a great dining experience, right? Dairy BQA helps furnish you with management tools and useful information to increase the value of the cattle you market. So I invite y'all to check it out at dbqa.org. See what it takes to be involved in your state. Because that's well, the right thing to do. Get ready for the Rocky Mountain Roundup. Join the 2011 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in the city that gets 300 days of sun a year, Denver, Colorado. 
It's not only a great opportunity to connect with your fellow cattlemen, but you will also attend important industry meetings, find out about the newest technologies, and get all the information you need for a successful year. We'll see you in Denver at the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show, February 2nd through the 5th. For more information, visit BeefUSA.org. Cattlemen have long recognized the need to properly care for livestock. Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter explains why it's important for producers to continue to be leaders when it comes to animal welfare. The term animal welfare is being used increasingly by producers, consumers, politicians, and others. However, the term can mean different things to different people. When we talk about animal welfare, the first thing to understand is that animal rights and animal welfare are two totally different issues. Animal welfare to me equals animal husbandry. And animal husbandry is the person that's getting up in the morning, doing the chores, the production practices that we have in place to make sure that our animals have shelter, they're fed properly, they have the proper health program. That to me is, is what producers do every day is animal welfare. Kansas State professor Dan Thompson believes the U.S. beef industry is doing things right when it comes to animal welfare. That's because producers recognized long ago that higher animal welfare standards can help enhance profitability. The thing that the consumers want to know, they want to be assured that what we're doing is the best that we can do for the animals. And that is exactly what we're doing. The producers, the farmers, and the ranchers uh, work diligently to care for their animals because if we don't care for the animals and we don't care for the land and we don't produce a, a, a safe, wholesome, nutritious product, we won't be in business. NCBA has developed care and handling guidelines as part of the Beef Quality Assurance Program. Self-imposed efforts like the BQA practices are the key to avoiding panel, additional and um, burdensome government regulation. The impact of such legislation of would John eventually Moore. trickle down to the consumer, some of whom in today's economic environment may not be able to afford the potential food cost increases. The level of food insecurity due to the recession here in the United States is at an all-time high. And, and what they mean by food insecurity is that we're at a point in time where people in the United States are insecure about the ability to put food on their table. How does that relate to animal welfare? Well, when we look at the different bills and we look at the different things on Capitol Hill as far as some of the food safety initiatives, some of the animal welfare initiatives, as we're moving into these areas, I'm not saying that having some sort of checks and balances system is inappropriate, but I do think that people need to understand how well we're taking care of these animals how well we're using our antimicrobials, and, and as they increase the cost of doing business, they will increase the, the cost of the food for the American citizens. Dr. Thompson says there are several things producers can do to disarm critics and prevent the need for legislation. The first step is to get out and help spread the positive message of the beef industry. Well, I think that being a good activist for the industry is important, and, and that starts even on a local level going into the schools. Uh, I think that education can't start soon enough on how people understand their, their food is being produced. The big thing that consumers need to understand is we have nothing to hide in the beef industry. We're a transparent industry. If you want to come out to our ranch or to our feedlot and see how beef is being produced, we invite you. The other thing we have to do for our consumers is when there is a case of abuse, our industry needs to stand up and say, that's wrong. I think, I think that is, is something that, that we have done in the past and, and will continue to do so as we move forward when we have a few bad apples try to spoil the whole bunch. The bottom line is producers that practice good animal welfare are creating long-term benefits for themselves and the entire industry. I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. NCBA has lots of resources concerning proper cattle care and handling, plus an opportunity to be certified in the Beef Quality Assurance Program. You can learn more at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It's a recipe that's sure to hit the spot when you and your family have worked up a big appetite. Joining us in the studio today is Chef Michelle Mussel. Michelle, thanks Hi. for coming. Thanks for having me again. Hey, tell us what kind of sandwich you're working on here. I'm going to put together a braised eye round sandwich. It's a garlic tomato basil toasted wow. sandwich. It is so good. All um, things I like. It, it, yeah, it's got fresh basil, fresh tomatoes, garlic, That's mayonnaise. <laughs> all the good stuff that put, you put together. Um, first thing I'm gonna start off with is about a pound and a half of eye round steak. Okay. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna uh, take the one steak. Sure. Here, the, just one eye round. Yep. And I'm going to, I've got uh, two teaspoons of uh, garlic here. Okay. And to that I'm gonna add just a little bit of my black pepper. Pepper, all right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this into a rub for the steak. Oh, okay. Outstanding. And then just press it to mm -hmm. press, I'm it, press the, it to the outside of the steak. Outstanding. Just garlic and pepper, pretty real simple. simple. Real yeah. simple. Okay. So just do some of this. Yeah. Just kind of spread it around like outstanding. that. Outstanding. It smells good. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> I love garlic. Okay, so we've got yeah. that all set. Okay. So I'm going to. And you I've do got that a, typically to both sides. Yep. Yep. Okay. So actually, uh, an easy trick that I like to do. Yep is I'm going to go ahead and place this in my hot nonstick skillet. Sure. Okay. Like this. That side down, yeah. So while this is browning, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and add Rest rub to rub. my other side. Gotcha. Okay. So yep. that so way it's even faster. It's fa to me it's faster and yeah. kind of it's actually less messy. Oh, I'm not gotcha. handling the meat and That's true. You know, then I don't have to necessarily uh, wash my hands in between and right. Good point. So, so it works just fine. Okay. And then, so then while this is brownie, yep. I'm gonna go ahead and make our garlic basil mayonnaise. All right. Okay. So I've got a half a cup of reduced fat mayonnaise. Ah, healthy, okay. yep. It's very much so. It's a lot lighter than regular mayonnaise, okay. and you really Don't can't tell the tell difference. The difference. Yeah. So I've got that. I'm gonna add to that a quarter cup of freshly chiffonade basil. Uh, <clears throat> I won't even <laughs> attempt to say that, all right? So I'm gonna add, just add that to it. But I remember how you did that. You rolled yep, the basil up, uh, leaves up and cut them. Uh, that was, that You're was a pretty quick neat. study. I'm telling you, <laughs> gonna learn this yet. And then I'm gonna add to this just a teaspoon of okay. minced garlic yep. here. And you, know, you can that's back that's off or add more depending on how much garlic sure. you like. I like a lot of garlic, so I'm that's good stuff. I'm gonna mix this up. Gotcha. I'm actually okay. gonna season this with a little bit of pepper too. Okay. I like a little pepper in my mayonnaise. You bet. So. Okay. Now and this how many step, sandwiches will that make then? This will make four sandwiches. Okay. Um, actually about six. About six sandwiches. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. Okay. So while this is, I'm going to go ahead and check this. Yeah. So we've got a little bit of browning going on. All right. Yeah. Okay. Medium heat, thereabouts? About medium. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this will take um, just a couple minutes on each side, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water. Oh, Because okay. I'm actually going to braise this cut. Okay. Okay, this cut needs a little bit of gentle heat. Um, braising allows the fibers in the steak or a roast like that to mm -hmm. break down. Really? And it's actually tenderizing. Okay. I'm just going to add a little bit of this to the skillet. Very you don't want to add too much, too much liquid. Oil. Okay. Mm -mm. You're not going to cover anything, just enough to kind of. I am going to cover it. Gotcha. Okay. So I would I would uh, go ahead and put four of my you know steaks, steaks in, in here. Skillet. Yep. Yep. And I would cover it. Okay. And just and turn my heat down to low. I see. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside. Okay. Because the of magic course, of TV. <laughs> I already have wow. steaks already braised for you. Outstanding. You're always prepared. So, got that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, and now this garlic mayonnaise, yeah. you can actually do it a day ahead. Oh, okay. And it would, it would actually be better because it gets more intensified. Wow, okay. So I'm going to remove this out of our way. Sure. And what I'm going to do is then with this, I'm going to spread. Oh, it becomes a sandwich spread then. Yep, I see. Absolutely. You don't put it on the meat. Gotcha. Yep, nope, you don't put it on the meat. Gotcha. So I'm going to spread this on my okay. roll. Yep. Both sides. It smells great. And I'm actually then going to broil this. Oh, okay. So what you're going to do is create just kind of a hot spread, really? and it's going to just kind of melt it into the bread. Oh wow! Okay. Bit. So of course, as you know, as magic of TV, you know I have some in the broiler Absolutely. ready for you. Absolutely. That's right. So I'm right. going to go grab those right now. Fantastic. Oh my 
my gosh, wait till you smell them. Wow, that's kind of bubbled up almost like cheese. Yep. Isn't that smell Those great? are delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. So to this, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. Actually, okay. put this out of my way. Now we're going to slice our beef. Yep. And yep. I'm going to take uh, one of my oh. steaks. That smells great. I so love these, garlic and basil. So these have been braised. They're nice braised. and tender. Okay. And again, this is a really lean cut, yes. so it makes a really great sandwich. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually slice this across the grain. Okay. Now, not only have I braised this to tenderize it, you always wanna slice beef across the grain. Gotcha. So Makes gonna, it easier to look at that. Mm -hmm. That looks tender. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna slice it about a quarter of an inch thick. Okay. I don't want it too thick, but I also don't want it too thin. Right. That's great. Does nice this look delicious? Pink. That looks great, yeah. I suppose you could use any other cut, I mean, steak if you wanted to as well. Oh, yeah, and actually yeah. this is a perfect sandwich to use any leftover steak. Right, perfect. So if you've had a, you know, just a great T-bone yeah. and you, you had the strip steak part, but you have the tenderloin left, yeah, perfect. slice up that tenderloin day. and put it on this sandwich. Great lunch recipe. So I'm gonna right. go ahead and take one side of this. Okay. I'm gonna lay, actually, you know, I'm gonna start with some tomatoes. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a base. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna add some color. Yeah. Lay out my tomatoes here. Tomatoes are good, good and healthy. And I'm gonna add my beef. Good lean eye around beef steak. That's perfect. Oop. Oops. It'll stand it's up. Kind of there. a little wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm That's going great. to pull from my bowl here yep. some really great fresh oh, uh, basil okay. leaves. You're put, so and this is actually kick. exactly yeah. it's gonna emphasize that fresh basil flavor even That's more. That's great. So just lay that across. It does look like a great sandwich. I'm going to put my lid back on here. Look at that. A hearty sandwich. And oh, this my is, gosh, yes. This is what we have when we uh, whoop, get all all done, it looks like, while you're cutting that one, huh? Yep. Super colorful. Oh, yeah. Delicious. It smells great. That's outstanding. It's, it does smell absolutely wonderful. This is here. Can help me out? How's that? Yeah. Nice and warm. So I'm going to try that. That just smells great. So what do you think? That is outstanding. Yeah. This is gonna this is gonna be a recipe at Cruzy, Colorado. That really is good. Yeah, I I, I imagine any guest that would come mm. over to your house would definitely demand that recipe. I love that. For details on this great recipe, visit our website at cattleman to cattleman .org. This is absolutely wonderful. Beef quality assurance. BQA is a program designed to ensure the consumer that your beef is safe and wholesome and of the highest quality, and it lets the buyers of your calves know that you know what you're doing. It's consumer friendly and can be a big part of giving them a great dining experience. So check it out at BQA.org and see what it takes to get involved in your state. Whether you got 15 cows or 1,500, it's the right thing to do. Trust. Out here, it's that rare combination of reliability, integrity, and the peace of mind that comes with having both. After 20 years of making hitches, the B&W Turnover Ball has become the most trusted gooseneck hitch in the country. Why is that important? Because trust is not only hard to earn, it's hard to find. The Turnover Ball Gooseneck Hitch by B&W. Trusted. A big part of the cowboy culture is the music that celebrates the West. The trail drives, the danger, and the romance of the life. All day I faced the barren waste. For hours he would ride on the range far and wide. We're up in the morning at breaking of day. The chuck wagon's ready, the flapjacks at play. What? Flapjacks at play. Are there signs posted on the perimeter of the chuck wagon warning? Caution, flapjacks at play. I have been known to write some goofy lines, but that one stops me in my tracks. Did the songwriter run out of time? Did nothing else wonderfully Western come to mind like, we're all on our way, I'm riding, obey. 
or if the writer insisted on sticking to the chuck wagon breakfast theme we're up in the morning at breaking of day the chuck wagon's ready the cook's a gourmet french toast the entree the wine's bordelais there's no sommelier just ask for jose Maybe the songwriter was masking an underlying story, a subliminal message revealing a conflict between the foods, suggesting perhaps that the flapjacks were leaving all the hard work to the bacon and eggs. Why not say the oatmeal's at play? It just doesn't sound right. And gravy, the gravy's at play? Of course not. The gravy's at sea. It has its own boat. Although cornflakes does have a nice ring, but not flapjacks. Flapjacks are couch potatoes. They're not into sports. You'll never hear a broadcaster say, the croissants have taken the field and the flapjacks are at play. So I must conclude that the songwriter deliberately wrote the nonsensical line to confuse folklorists and musicologists and the occasional cowboy poet and former large animal veterinarian. The poet's gone crazy and sure lost his way. He should stick to vet work. My dog needs a spay. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter, and we'll be right back. You know, I didn't think I could afford to vaccinate for scholars. Then my vet told me about Guardian vaccine. Guardian offers the most complete coverage of any scholars vaccine. And now Guardian can protect my calves against E. coli up to six months prior to calving. It pays to vaccinate with Guardian scholars vaccine. Thanks to Guardian, I have healthier calves and healthier profits. Quality matters to us because we're entrusted with the safe transportation of animals. Those animals can represent generations of hard work. It's up to us to deliver the goods that drive the beef industry. We link all the segments of the beef industry together, passing the torch of quality from one business to the next. Consumers count on us to bring the quality that starts on the family ranch to their home. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll see you back here next week on RFD TV.